This is an interview with Mrs. Cora J. Glasper of the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute's Oral History Project. I'm Dr. Horace Huntley, the president at the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute. Today is October 22nd, 1997. Thank you, Ms. Cashman, for taking time out of the schedule. I just want to start by asking you a general question about your background. Were your parents from Birmingham? No, they were from Hale County. Hale County, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, but you were born here in Birmingham. In Birmingham. Uh -huh. How many brothers and sisters did you have? Nine. Nine? Okay. Where did you fit in into the scheme of things? I was next to the last one, next to the youngest. Oh, okay. Um, were all of them born here in Birmingham? Uh, yeah, all of them born here. Okay. What kind of work did your father do? Sloth by product. Sloth, oh, okay. And your mother, did she work outside of the home? No, not too much, but 10 you know. She's great time. Yeah, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. what, uh, how much education did your parents have? I think mother uh, had an eighth grade education. I think my dad was something like that for six. Mm -hmm. And what neighborhood did you grow up in? Well, I was born in the Smithfield area, but I really, most of my growing up was doing in college there. Oh, okay. And you started school where? I started the school in Smithfield. In Smithfield? Uh, I moved okay. to Clarksville when I was second grade. Okay. So you started, was it Hill School? No, Hill School in there. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Lincoln School, I think. The Lincoln, oh, okay. And then you moved to College Hill. Hill. In, uh, in a, into Hudson, Hudson School. Okay. Right. What do you remember about those first days in school? Well, you know, I, I didn't think anything about it. Mm -hmm. Really, what I really thought about my early years in school was when I got to grad school at UEB. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I entered a class uh, in reading for gifted children and uh, the, um, you know, uh, hard to learn children. Hmm. And uh, different one ways, telling their first premise and what they were, and, and they, I mean, they just carried away over their first books. So the instructor said, well, Cora, I haven't heard you say anything about your first reader. What was the name of your first reader? And this one, and Dormy, I said, really, I never did see a cover on it, but I never did see the name. We just mm. read. Mm. I'm serious. Mm -hmm. Because we didn't get the books until they had torn back the covers off. Okay. So, so you had the books secondhand. Right. And therefore, that you never even considered. Never that thought that important. Mm -hmm. But I always, my, my parents always instilled in me that that was an important to know how to read them. Right. But right. No, as far as uh, the publisher and the name of the book, I never did see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, to them, it was real funny. Right. But, but it really was a fact. Yeah. And that was very significant because that points out more okay. than just that you didn't have a cover on a book. Right. That meant that there was not a cover on a lot of things. Right. Of that You're time. right about that. Yes. So that period of, of your, so your elementary school days, what do you most remember about that time? Are there, were there any people, any teachers that uh, stand out in your mind? Uh, were you active? Yes, definitely. Um, see, I'm a, I, I later grew to be a teacher. Right. It can stand out in my mind because they, I think they did an excellent job with what they had to do it with. Mm -hmm. See, they didn't have anything to work with. Right. But I think they did an excellent job. I never had any problems in school in any way. And when I uh, became a grown person, I never had any problems going away if I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. But I still, it goes back to those that dedication that those people gave us with nothing to work with. Right, right. Did you go, what high school did you attend? Park, A.H. Park. Okay. Did you go to Oldham Park? Yes, I did. Uh -huh. the, um, I graduated from uh, Hudson School in 1943. Well, the first year we went to Oldham, then they sent us back to uh, what, what they call Parker Annex, right. some other house down there. Right. 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 Near near Lincoln. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you went then on to Park. Parker. For senior high. What do you remember about Parker? Parker at that time was one of the largest schools in the country. Yes, and the only black school. 
They built Western Oldham the year I graduated, I think. Mm -hmm. But Parker was the only one. I tell you what I remember. We had to ride what we call a special from North Birmingham. Mm -hmm. And they would bring us to school. When we got to Phillips High School, we said we had to pass Phillips to go to Parker. Right. Those kids would lay in the street, okay? And the bus driver couldn't make them get up, but we just had to sit down until they decided they wanted Which to get up. Why would they lay in the street? Because they, they, they I don't know, well, you know, um, teenagers have always been just as they are now. Mm -hmm. But uh, they just felt like they had control of everything, and they did. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we got to right, keep, keep the, the bus, bus from passing. Mm -hmm. right. And Phillips High School. Phillips High School. Phillips High at that time was all white. Right. Right. And sometimes we got to school at 9, mm -hmm. 9 15. Did that happen uh, more than once? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, more than once. Were you involved in extracurricular activities at Parker? No, not too much. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite subject? I always just liked school. Mm -hmm. okay, so you were one of those that just liked school. Loved right? school. Mm -hmm. so, why did you like school? So? Well, I keep telling you, I've been teaching, my parents always talk about an education and how important it would be in their life. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they've always said, if you don't want to, uh, Live and work like I'm doing, go to school, go to school, go to school, and it was just one of them. And there was a hard job because my dad was the only bread one in the house, right. and there were 10 of us. Right. So I just developed a love for it. I, I just love learning. What was it like being next to the last of 10 children in the family? Was it, was it fun growing up in a family that, that large? It was fun. It was fun. Uh, because for a long time, see, my younger sister came eight years later. Mm -hmm. so, so I grew up mostly as a, the youngest. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a lot of fun. The only thing is, I had a weight problem. Mm -hmm. And my mother always tried to restrict me from eating certain things. And I, I couldn't eat french fries, the good stuff that she would mm -hmm. like. And mm -hmm. she would give me something. But now this, this is what she thought now. So that way. Seven or eight around the table, and I would have my celery with some peanut butter on it or something. But I sit on the floor under the table. And I think about it, she could have given me a little on the plate, but when eight, seven, or eight of them popping it up on the table to me, I had a lot more than I needed. <laughs> yeah, a lot but, more than you would have had on the Right, <laughs> right. But she didn't understand that. Mm -hmm. And uh, they didn't know they were hurting me either. Right. Yes. In the name of the Lord, they just Pick them French fries up. Everybody's trying to come. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah but it was fun. Yeah. It really was fun. Mm -hmm. We had to have fun because my dad just insisted that a family be a family and a family was a unit. Mm -hmm. Because his old saying is, I don't care how wrong your family are, don't you go against them puppies. Mm -hmm. So now you get them home and you give them the tail, but don't you go against your family puppies. And that grew up in us. Right. So you had a close knit family. Yes. Mm -hmm. Close knit, poor family. Right, right. What did you do after high school? I went into, I entered into Book of Washington Business College. Mm -hmm. January of 47, I graduated in August of 48. Mm -hmm. And after that? I married and I didn't go to school anymore until uh, 1960. Mm -hmm. Then I went to Miles College. When did you become a registered voter? Oh, a long time ago. As soon as your own first show, we got you. But was that was that before the movement yes. really got started? Yes, before, before 1954, 55. Right. Okay. right. What, I think remember? it was about 1952 or something like that. Do you remember when you actually went to register? Yes, I remember, and I remember. Of course, they asked me uh, how many peanuts was in a bushel, and I said, "Sir, I've never had a bushel of peanuts." <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Well, did you pass the first time? Yes. You did. But you know, back then we had to pay a poll tax too. Right. Mm -hmm. okay, so you've been a voter then since the early 1950s? Yes, mm -hmm. early 1950s. Did you ever work, work with any other people to uh, instruct them on how to take the test, uh, to actually encourage people to go down and vote? Yes, because uh, they really felt like they could. Mm -hmm. Okay. I work with many people to tell them it can be done because I have done it. Mm -hmm. And you know, the best way to convince a person, well, it goes back to this. 
you know, if I'm always teaching, who oh, the Lord will make a way for me. The Lord will do this. And every time they see me, I don't have anything. I can't, I can't tell them that. Right. See, because they are watching me rather than listening to what I say. The actions speak loud. Right. And so I told them that it could be done. I said, this is all you're going to do. And then I told them how blind I am. I said, I haven't, I never had a pump. Pushing the peanuts mm-hmm. and ask someone about the tailors and all mm-hmm. oh, asinine questions. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Birmingham has always been noted for uh, to be well the most segregated city in the country. What do you remember about uh, that part of Birmingham? Any events in your life that you remember that would point to segregation? Uh, Oh my Lord, everything I can remember pointed to segregation. Because I always remember more than anything, even after I married. You would go to London. No, you, you don't remember that. Oh, absolutely. Oh, you don't? You do? I do. Oh, okay. Yes. Lummer was down on 3rd Avenue and 19th Street. That was a great big department store. And they had a restaurant up there in the mezzanine. And um, you could go there and pay them $500. But you couldn't get a hamburger if you were hungry and the aroma just be oozing out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you remember those? And, and I remember seeing us walk up the street eating because I thought that was very, um, I don't know, I just don't like to see people walking up the street eating, but that's the only way we could eat. Right. But you could actually buy it there, but you have to walk outside to eat it. Right. Mm-hmm. right. I remember Newberry's the same yes. way. Yes. And physics. Right. All of those little Chris, S.H. Chris. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. right. Um, were you ever, did you ever have any personal problems with any policemen, uh, with any, any white people that ever stopped you for any reason? No, you know, I did not. Because when we got ready to, uh, when the movement organized us to uh, desegregate the buses, right. uh, it was an organized thing. Mm-hmm. Everybody knew, and there, somebody knew where you were at all the time. Because we were organized. If I, I'm to board uh, 23 North Birmingham bus at 11.30, mm-hmm. and I'm going to ride to the end, I'm going to come back, but somebody knew where you were all the time. Right. Okay, but I had a little girl, a little baby girl, was bored of them. Well, I couldn't get out from under her. Mm-hmm. And so she had to always go with me. Mm-hmm. So when they stopped the buses and took the boat off, they were always letting me stay on my other girl. Mm. Oh yeah, I heard one of the policemen tell her she has a baby with her. So, uh, let me ask you this though. Do you remember how you got involved in the movement? As I told you, I remember uh, when I was children with church right. at the time. And uh, I just knew uh, uh, social issues were not being handled like they're supposed to. I didn't know like I know now. But whatever it took, and I'll tell you another thing. See, my husband was a businessman, okay? He was not afraid now, but he was fearful. Okay, he came here in 1940, something like that. But he was the first black cab company in Birmingham. Okay? Uh, where did he come from? He came from Mississippi. But Yellow Cab was the only cab company in Birmingham. Mm-hmm. And they wouldn't dare let us ride. So as a result, he didn't run into too much difficulty being licensed to go in business. And uh, so as a result of that, I don't remember. Well, you actually talked about, you, we were, you see, I think I asked you about uh, why you got involved in the movement. Yes, right, all of that was part of it. Mm-hmm. Now, you say your husband was a businessman. Right. And he worked also. He worked. He worked for a public studio. Okay. Right. And he's had a business on on the side. Right. Okay. Jake's cab company. Okay. Did he uh did his employ employers know that he had a business? Yes, I can imagine so. Mm-hmm. But they never interfered with him in any way. No way. Mm-hmm. Well, did he always work the two, his business and the job with Republic Steel? Right. Mm-hmm. But now the but the, the business now. Other drivers were driving to Texas, right. but it was just his business. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, how many children did you have? Two. Two children. Okay. Were they involved in the movement? They did. They wouldn't let them get involved too much. Mm-hmm. I, the last time they were going, 
But that, that was during the time under, in the demonstration period in the 60s. Mm -hmm. See, this movement was a thing way prior to that. Right. Yes, it right. started in 56 with, uh, with Alvin and the Christian movement. Right. And they bombed shelter home right. Christmas of 56. Mm -hmm. right. Were you a member at that time? No, I left the year after Ramachandra came. Mm -hmm. okay. I think Ramachandra came to the church in uh, 49. Mm -hmm. Somewhere. Because uh, I moved. Into my husband's church in like the second Sunday, February of 1950. Hmm. What church was that? New Mount Holly Baptist. Okay. Was that in North Birmingham? Yeah. Well, it was on a place you may remember as Saraton. Saraton, okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. But we are oh, as far as the man used to be. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, you actually rolled the buses in an attempt to desegregate the city buses. Right, right. you're right. Uh, how did tell me about that? How did you how did you get involved in that and what what was the process? Well well it was just an organized thing and we had to understand that someone would be we had contact people we could if anything should occur or whatever, whatever. It was just an all a, a usual thing. It wasn't difficult to do, just get on a bus and sit where you found a seat. Mm -hmm. And when they asked you to get up, just refuse. Mm -hmm. And you were never arrested? I wasn't. Did you refuse to get up? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. But uh, And they stopped the bus and called the policemen and all that kind of thing to everybody else. But I heard one of the uh, officers tell me that she has a baby. Mm -hmm. But they never did anything. And I rode just the way I was sitting until I got to the end and got back home mm -hmm. because the bus was running right in front of my house anyway. Right. Yeah. Uh, did you attend the Monday night meetings? Every Monday night. I didn't miss them. How would you describe a mass media? Well, no, when we first started, we didn't have mass media, I don't think. No, mass meetings. Oh, how meetings. Did, yeah, how, do you, how would you, if you just explain to someone that never been to a mass yeah. meeting, how would you explain? Well, one thing I would let them know that it was uh, spirit-led, because you could feel the spirit. Then uh, we were taught, we were informed of what was going on, that we were not aware of as a group of people. We were not aware that things were as critical as they really were. And uh, that kind of thing. And we had an Alabama Christian movement choir, mm -hmm. sang with the choir. Mm -hmm. Oh, you sang in the choir? Right. Okay. So you attended most of the meetings? All of them. All of them? All of them. You never missed a meeting. Did you look forward to the meetings? Yes. Yes. The enthusiasm then that's generated as a result of that, was that infectious? Did it, did it catch on with other people as well? Yes. Like your they, friends and relatives? I, I, I want you to go with me. Yes. I'm going, and next time they go ask your friend, I want you to go with me. And it grew, and it grew, and it continued to grow. Mm -hmm. Yes. Were other were your brothers and sisters involved? No, about that time, my older brothers uh, had moved away. Mm -hmm. And moved away to try in different uh, states of Noah. Right. But I tell you, uh, Birmingham walked most every day, but all of us are segregated now. Because mm -hmm. I, I know in 1952, we went to Santa Monica Beach in California. Mm -hmm. You know, we had to drive that long just because we couldn't even stop mm -hmm. a hotel or um, like anything like that. Right. And we got to Santa Monica Beach, and I was hungry. I told my husband, I'm hungry, so uh, somebody told me, go down to such and such a restaurant and such and such a thing. Then another poor black man came and said, don't go down there, you won't even be able to buy that food. Mm -hmm. Well, we did go down there. I think they asked something like $6 for the hamburger. And just extortion amounts. Mm -hmm. They pushed us all on amounts right. in the different areas where Birmingham was just for real. Mm -hmm. And uh, the same hamburger. My husband bought one. He said, I'm not going back to it. We're going down with this poor fellow from school. We got that same number of one dollar. But they, they were segregated. But when we went to that crap here in Washington, I don't know what the told you about it. Um, yeah, it was in the uh, 50s. And uh, a poor lady knew nothing about us or anything. Opened her door to let us change clothes and just freshen up. We had to cry about that scene. Yeah. So Birmingham is the most populated, but 
all of them to a degree for that way. Washington D.C. was. I'm telling you, it was Washington D.C. We were standing on the on the uh, Lincoln Memorial grounds. We, we were talking about how hot we would and all this kind of thing. She's like, "Why don't you come over to my house and just wash your face?" Mm -hmm. Real sweet. She didn't know anything about it. Right. We could have been crooks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the Lord has always said He would make provision for His people, and He has. Mm -hmm. Did you demonstrate in other arenas other than riding the bus? No, I tell you what, I had to kind of take back seat most time because of my husband's uh, business with the city. Mm -hmm. See, now my name, Steve, his name still followed me where I went, right? right. But uh, I had to kind of uh, take a back seat in in the sit ins and the lay ins and mm -hmm. all that kind of thing right. and, and encourage somebody else to go on mm -hmm. and explain to them why I couldn't. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Birmingham has changed over time. Yes. As a result of what took place there. Yes. Uh, and one of the things I think we've probably not done a good job of is telling our children about it. You're right. Why do you think we did? Well, I tell you what, because we don't, uh, we don't want to be realist. Why I'm saying that when when uh, Jefferson County desegregated their schools. I was sent to an all-white school, an all-white situation. That was in 1967. Okay. So was that the first year? I think they sent two people in 66, I'm not sure, but I know in 67. Yeah. Right. What school? Cahaba Heights, out of Highway 280. And, um, but I did go in there, uh, and we, I had all-white children, okay? The school had not been integrated, but the, the faculty was just integrated when right. I went. But uh, I taught those children mm -hmm. the history, our history. Oh, okay, yeah. I did. So they sent us the first 15 black students in 1969 or 70 or something like that. So I, I had, I had, I continued to use it. You what know? was the reaction when you first arrived? No reaction at all. Uh, 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 their reaction was that surprise. I can't believe it. No hostilities? No. Is that right? No hostility. How many black teachers were there? I was the only one. You were the only one? I was the only one until 69. Then they sent one more. And, and then and no hostility, but in February of 70, they sent four black ones. Mm -hmm. And they cut up. Is that right? The students did? No, no. The uh, community did. Community did. Right, but they, the community was exceptionally nice to me. Exactly. I can't uh, give them credit for that. Mm -mm. I can't But when they it. sent four blacks in, that's when the community reacted. Yes, but you know what I think it was? And maybe you don't know what I think. Sure, I maybe it was in February, and that's the middle of a year. Mm -hmm. To me, the timing was kind of wrong, mm -hmm. you know? Maybe let them start off in September, because when I had to go, Naturally, being reborn and reared in Birmingham, I was scared to death. Mm -hmm. But I knew I wanted to work. So, um, and it was really heavy on me until I reached that campus. When I stepped in the car, it was like the needle was bird dropped on me, like you would drop a heavy overcoat. Mm -hmm. And the principal was very old, and uh, you know, they didn't talk to those people. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't hear where he got to be talking out. He said, uh, See, I'm gonna put you right here. So when they get after you, I can get to you quickly. <laughs> and I said, Lord, forgive him. He doesn't know what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they didn't get after me. You said when the other four came out, yes. the community cut up. What did they do? Well, they stood across the, the entrance ways to keep from coming in. I mean, those you know, big bankers and lawyers that I respected so much that they had respected me, I couldn't mm. believe it. Mm. Because when they sent the first one, with the first four, the principal, she couldn't drive, okay? So the principal called and asked me if I would bring her to school. And I said, well, yes, if her husband can get over to my house, I said, I, I won't be able to leave time enough to pick her up, but she lived in the Smithville area. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I didn't know her there. I said, I can't leave time to pick up, so I was brought her. So I noticed when I, I drove up on the campus, he was out there in my car. Take her all in your room, I'm coming to get her. Okay? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, I said, I want to go out here. You mm know. -hmm. And you take her on in the room. And I had taught my first class, okay. And the class had gone to art. No one was sitting there but she and I. Mm -hmm. And this man came into the room. I didn't even know I had taught his older child and had a second child. Which one, which of you is Miss Glass? I said, I am. I don't know how to name. I'm just trying to see what's going on. I said, well, I didn't know nothing was going on. And he asked her, who are you? And so uh, she told him who she was. He said, get up and get out of here. By that time, uh, the prophet came and told him, said, you can't talk to her, you have to talk to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. But uh, the word got back to this child in art. And when he came back, he was so distraught. This is this the child, child of the... Ten-year-old child. Mm -hmm. Because... And usually boys don't like me to love them and hug them and do this kind of thing. He sat on my lap crying so I could kill myself. I said, you wouldn't correct anything if you kill yourself. But do you know about three years after that he did? He did. He did. Mm -hmm. She did. He had gone to, uh, he had left her and had gone to Grisham. Mm -hmm. He had school. High school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was that much reaction about one other black Teacher coming in. Yeah, the, you think that they but I'll tell you what happened. See, they didn't have a class because the four white teachers that they supposed to have replaced refused to go. So they really walked a hall from one end of the hall to the other from eight to three every day from February to end of May. Ooh, the teachers the black teachers that were sent, the white teachers wouldn't leave. Oh, they didn't have, they didn't really have a class. No. Mm. They didn't really have a class because the white teachers who supposedly if you left to go to other schools, yeah. they refused. And so as a result, they didn't have a class. They walked the halls. They would, he would ask them to sit in on with her. But I couldn't blame them for not doing that. Because mm -hmm. one day said, no, I've been teaching school 25 years. I don't need to sit in and not believe anybody. So the next year then, had those other teachers transferred and the black teachers? Not in transfer, but they were able to move to another spot there. You know, there's not a great turnover in the teaching profession. They don't leave too often. But somehow or another, you know, the next year they did get a class. But the lady that was in my class that he upset, she started having problems with vision. And when she died, she was black. It's very interesting though, that they didn't react to your coming. They really didn't, honestly. They really but did. They did react when they did But I tell you what happened though after that first year. But now see, I, I don't I didn't finish telling you about um, when I was teaching this black history, okay? Mm -hmm. to, right. about, to the children. About the civil rights movement. Right. And about a segregation in Birmingham and mm -hmm. uh, denial of certain privileges thing. And see, they couldn't realize that that their parents uh, four parents or whatever could have done that. But um then, as I taught it, the white teacher said, well, that is a good idea. We need to teach it. But as soon as they started teaching it, then the other black teachers became upset and angry. So they don't want to go and just talk slavery. I said, baby, we can't teach history unless we teach slavery. Mm -hmm. Because we were an enslaved people. Right. Right. And so that, that broke down, that set up a lot of barriers mm -hmm. because of our feelings right. from our people. They didn't want to, don't, all I hear is talking about slavery. I said, that's history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting that you know, you've been one of the first out in Jefferson County yes. actually being accepted. Right. And indeed. then being allowed to teach black history. Well, I did. We made molds and some from the ceiling for the whole month of February. And these are all white kids. All, they were all white kids. Did the parents have any reactions? No. I, I can imagine the parents have been prepared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any. And how long did you teach? In Jefferson County. Oh, I taught in Jefferson County 30 years. See, I had already taught uh, three years in Bethlehem, the school we call Pipe Shop in Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. You do know what Pipe Shop was? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then I uh, went to Cobb Heights in 1967 and stayed until 1988. Mm -hmm. And I, went, I moved into a, a transfer to a school in my community. Where did you teach before you went to Cobb Heights? I lived school in Bessemer Pipe Shop. At Pipe Shop. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then during the movement, then you were at Pipe Shop. We had the movement, well, yes. 
Yeah. But were you were you uh, active? You went to all of the meetings. Were you mm-hmm. ever fearful of losing your job? No, after I got it. Now, that, that, was, that was that chief concern when I got the job. But as I told you, my husband was a businessman. He had a little twin. Right. Uh, maybe you've heard of George Rogers. Yeah. Okay. George Rogers was on the board in Jefferson County. Mm-hmm. And uh, really, my first year teaching was in the Birmingham City. But I was a permanent sub. I didn't have a contract there. Right. Until my sister was transferred to that school. And it was, uh, I don't know what it is now. It was a rule then that relatives couldn't teach at the same school. So as a result, I had to go. So when I talked to Mr. Rogers about it, he said, I don't know anybody in the city, but I'm going to judge him out of it. That's what that's the thing with me. So he sent me to this place. Now, I think um, he um, did a lot to help me. I really do. He was a well-respected attorney. But but I know that uh, he did uh, call me in and tell him he was sending me. And that's the first thing you want to know, how did I know him? And I told him he was a for my husband's business. And I told him everything I guess Mr. Rogers had already told him. Yeah, but I didn't have any problems. Is there anything else that we did not cover that you would like to just mention about Birmingham, yourself, or growing up here, all about the movement? No, no more than I, I had a happy life. I grew up happy. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always been taught early. Things you can change, change it. Think things you can't change, don't worry about it. And uh, I'm still that way today. I don't worry. That's good policy. Right. I always remember my mother used to always say, "You don't find W O R R Y in the dictionary, mm-hmm. so in the Bible." I say, but you look for T R U S T, and you'll find it everywhere. Mm-hmm. And that just what I grew up on that philosophy, and I still mm-hmm. adhere to that. Because now when things were really rough and couldn't eat and we couldn't do this. And I really, uh, it has been a time in Birmingham. We could sit on the front porch and see Klansmen. They wouldn't say anything to us because when, even when I was a child, we'd just be sitting on, you know, folks used to have front porches and steps that you mm-hmm. sit on. And they would parade up and down the street. Now, my youngest child is 48 years old now. Mm-hmm. But she remembers that and it's it gave her a fright and scare that she won't ever remember for yet. Mm. Marching down your street. Yes. Mm. Even, well, not, not just my street, but over there, I had a brother living on 20th Street between 11th, 10th and 11th Avenue. Mm-hmm. They were terrible over there. Sorry. Yes. What do they do about it? What do you mean? When they parading and going on. Mm. But I tell you, when I went to Carl Harbor Heights, though, my social studies class, we did a history of Carl Harbor Heights. And in doing that history, it flowed with me that Carver Heights was Ku Klux territory. Mm-hmm. But see, I didn't know that until we were doing that research. Mm-hmm. But I tell you what, I didn't run into the problem and sold a lot of books. <laughs> uh, right. Yes, but I tell you what, I did it in conjunction. I had a parent in Sanford University. Mm-hmm. Okay? And we did it together as a project for her graduate work. She helped me to get with the information and all, and I typed it in when the children did the graphics and all that kind of stuff. See, well, this was before even Red Mountain Expressway was there. Carl Heights was public middle class. Yes, yes. Poor white folks. No, no. Well, you obviously made a difference. Out there, oh, I want to feel like I did. I feel real confident. I, uh, I feel comfortable. I did a good job. I did what the Lord wanted me to do. Mm-hmm. Right, because when he first sent those black students to us, at the time we didn't have a PE teacher. And if the word had gotten out, they sent us 15 black children. So we had a uh, to the bottom of something like 1100. Right. And a little girl would out, out sit in a chair like I am now while they pitched the basketball and go with a different thing. And she was sweet as she could be. She said, oh, I'm so scared of black people. Mm-hmm. I'm scared of them. I said, they don't go to you. I said, they're going to lose you. Uh-uh, I'm scared of black people so mean. Mm-hmm. So I let us talk for a little while. I said, am I mean to you? No. But you aren't black. I said, yes, I am. Mm-hmm. See, she talked about the color. Right. Okay. Yeah. I said, yes, I am. So she looked so strange. Mm-hmm. 
Well, you aren't that kind of black. Well, that meant she was talking about skin tone. Right. Do but, you think that that could have, had a, uh, could have been one of the reasons that you didn't meet any problems when you first went out there? Oh, when, I, when they said it was black kids, I had been there three years or something. But uh, I feel like, why are they run here? Now, this is what I feel. Mm -hmm. Because when I got to school that morning, I went into my classroom, okay? Now, the devil tried to make me get a shake, because I was so used to black children just <clears throat> pushing on in the door. Mm -hmm. But they wouldn't. They stood out there, there waiting for me to invite them in. Mm -hmm. So finally, someone knocked on the door. You know, uh, they said, may we come in? I said, yes, come in. Mm -hmm. But I was realistic. I said, look, we know the federal government's decision, okay? I'm not any happier than you are, but we're going to have to be here together. I said, we can work through this problem with your cooperation and mine. And I think that's what made the difference. I, uh, I realized we just have to be a realist. You just have to be for real. And I was, and I didn't have any with them. But at the end of the year, a number of us, because I was teaching four classes, we uh, had that passing from one section to the They knocked on that door and told me, we do want to express our appreciation to you. You won your respect. We didn't give it to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I really didn't have any problems. Well, Ms. Glassman, I want to thank you for taking time out of your business here. So you, you helped us an awful lot, giving us some insight on some areas. That I enjoyed it. I really did. Thank you.